Okay. Any uh, any questions on anything that we said so far? Uh, there was a special tom that was said in the in the parsha. Uh, the shall shall us. Uh, there's six times I think it's like appears six times oh, in the Torah. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask, like, what, was there a special significance? There is. I'll that? show you two places where we find it. I'll show you two. Hi, take it. Where I'll show you two places where we find it, and there is definitely a significance. If you take a look, these are the two that I know of. There are there are other there are other signific significai that the proliferal significances significai. But the uh, I'll show you two places where it comes up. The first one is in Parshas Lech Lecha, when um, it when when uh, Sodom is being overturned. Uh, uh, one second, you know what Parshas Vayera? Sorry, yeah, and. Uh, Take a look at Pasuk 86, page 86, in the big blue book. They still haven't okayed me, Blake, but I guess that's where there was only we're only one week in, right? It's 21 days. They still haven't okayed me. But uh, okay, take. Have people been sending? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So there, there, you know, quite a few, as a matter of fact. So, I, so I'm just hoping that it works out. No reason it shouldn't, right? So, the uh, okay, Michigan. It reminds me of the Fab Four, Fab Five. The Fab, I saw those games. I was in America at the time. Yeah, I saw when they lost. I wanted them to lose so bad. I saw them lose to Duke in the finals. Yeah, I, I just really wanted them to lose badly. Is, is your goal today to make Yeshiva students upset? No, why? Did they? Yeah, well, Did that's my goal. That's my goal seven. every day. <laughs> no, that was when was that in the nineties? I, I, they, they yeah, just, they're, they're, they're just five. They're and Jalen Rose, Jalen Rose, yeah. Jalen Rose, and Juwan Howard. And he, he's now the coach. Who is? Juwan Howard. He's the coach. Yeah. Oh, I thought for sure he'd be in prison by now. Juwan. The, Juwan. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, he just had that look when he was in college that he no, should have done. He was the good guy? Was the yeah, good guy? Was like oh, the boy. <laughs> they were strutting on. That wasn't the game that he called the out. They got, they, 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 there was the year, that was the next year. The first year, that was when they were freshmen. When they yeah, were, right. They were right. freshmen and they lost to Duke. They were strut. That's why they called the fam. They were strutting all over the place. The whole country hated them. Then they made it to the finals. Everybody wanted to see them lose. Like the bad boys with the Pistons. Yeah, yeah, but there was a good team. In any event, um, so before we were interrupted by Blake, uh, <laughs> the best defense is a good offense. Uh, page 86, page 86, uh, if you look five lines from the bottom. Now this is where the angel, the angels tell Lot to take his two daughters and grab and go. Take his daughter's wife because the snow is about to be destroyed. If you look at five lines from the bottom, it says, that's how it's read. I'm not a Balkori, but that's how it's read. And you get it in, in, in the, the art school, it says he lingered. Now picture a guy who's being told, leave town. There's a wealthy man. Take your wife and your daughters and leave town. That's it. Otherwise you're cooked. And you're going to leave everything behind you. How would you feel about that? It's like, it's like, <laughs> it, it, it's like there's, there's a, 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 a like, oh, are you, you know, like, it's like, it, it, there's so many emotions in there. There are just so many emotions in there. You know, they're, they're like, oh boy, you know, it's like, 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 whoa, 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 that sort of thing. The next time you find it is if you go to Parshas Vayeshev. And this is where you, Mrs. Potiphar starts up with Yosef. And if you take a look on page 216. Um, 214. 214. So Mrs. Potiphar has been making advances. And on page 214, uh, nine lines from the bottom. Nine lines there. She says, Vatomer Shikhvaimi. She says to Yosef, sin with me. Look at the next word. And he refuses. Now there are a couple of a couple ideas that are connected. Number one, it's not an easy refusal. 
to have an easy refusal. There's a, a single, young single guy and a lady's chasing him around the house and it's a refusal. And it's a refusal like Lot's refusal. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can hear, you can imagine it, number one. Other commentaries say that it represents a chain. That like, no, I'm locking this up. I want this to be clear top to bottom. No, nothing's going to happen here. right? Which again is different than by Lot because by Lot it's definitely a lament. By Yosef, it's more a display of strength. I'm, I'm, I'm like, it's a no. And we learned from here, by the way, that Yosef first says no, and then he goes into explanations. Doesn't give the explanation, then say a no. First he says no. You want to know why? No, I'll tell you why. Which I told you is the mistake that mothers often make. When a kid wants something, the mother starts saying, giving an explanation. Mommy could have a brownie. We don't have any in the house. Well, I could go up to the store and get some. No, the store is closed. Well, I'll get them up to open it. No, it's not healthy. I have them all the time. I'm okay. And she had something with, with daddy. Dad, can I get it? No. <laughs> no. No. no that's straight out no. So Yosef, Yosef gives that straight out blank refusal. Okay? In this part, I was actually wondering about why, why we have the, 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 why the, the shall shut over here. And I don't know why. It only talks about where, what page is it on? Where do you have the shell show? Where he slaughters the, the, the what do you call it? And I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know what, what, what the significance here because there's no real, you know, there's no real test or anything going on over here. So I don't know. I don't know. What do you say? I don't even know where, where is it? Do you remember where it is? Which page? 584. Um, let's see, 584. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh I, have, I have an idea. I have an idea here. I have an idea now. I just, I never thought of this before. Um, this is the inauguration of Aaron. This is the initiation of Aaron and his sons to be the Kohanim. And Moshe Rabbeinu shechts it, and he takes the blood and sprinkles it on the right ear and on the right toe and on the right arm. And it could be that over here, this is also a lament, because who was supposed to be the Kohen Gadol? Moshe was supposed to be the Kohen Gadol. Even though there, are, even though it's like Vayishcha, boy, oh boy, oh boy, what I'm losing. Now there are commentaries that say that that, it, it, and this is particularly um, where uh, um, where where there is one of the commentaries. So it's either here in Parsha Shmini. Um, where Moshe, it shows, it uses an expression, I forgot where it is, using an expression that shows Moshe was happy for Aaron. Yeah. Just like Aaron was happy for Moshe. And Aaron had to appoint Moshe. You have to put Aaron, see, Aaron is a, is, it, you have to put Aaron in a, in a, in a proper perspective. Moshe, what, Moshe Rabbeinu left Egypt when he was a young boy. He killed the Egyptian and he runs out. And then he disappears. He comes back when he's 80 years old. Right? He comes back when he's 80. There are all sorts of discussion. What were the Midrash and where was Moshe during that time? There's one opinion that he was the king of Kush. It is generally, generally called Ethiopia. For 40 years, he was the king of Kush. King of Kush. Yeah, so that he, that he uh, what do you call it? Well, the, the Midrash talks about, <laughs> was that a song or something? Or is that, is that, a, is that a rap? Is that a rapper? What, what, what's that? Kush is like a... Kush is what? It's like, it's like, yeah, it's, it's a, I never heard of that. Wow, Kush is weed. Well, that's great. Kush is weed? Never heard that expression before. You know, you know, learn, live and learn. That's the benefit of being at Orsamach. I'll tell you, I, I got to get, you know, you gotta, you, you're up, you stay up with things over here. Never heard that. You know, you know, listen, we had weed in our days. They were called by other things. You know, they had all sorts of names. It's actually an old timer to say Kush. Kush. That I never heard. So he was the king of Kush, but in... Kush. He was the king of Kush. Uh, see, the problem is nowadays you can't say anything. That's the problem. Nowadays you cannot say anything. I was once in Sheer, I was talking about Lawrence Taylor, who's a football player. So I brought up Lawrence Taylor. So one guy goes, oh, he's sick. I said, I thought he was good. So that's what I said, he's sick. Uh, oh, oh, I see. Uh -huh. Oh, sick means good. You know, you, right? Uh, sick means you're really like, you're, you're, you're right, that sort of thing. And I, you know, and I, and I, you know, pick up, or, or, or you're, um, if something is very good, we, he can be described as mad bad. Yes. Right? Bad was good, right? Bad was good. And if you're mad bad, 
Oh, that was mad, mad sick. Right? That means that means well, what we used to call excellent. <laughs> and not only that, I mean, it's like you go up to somebody and say, you know, yo, what's up? You know, in our days it was, hi, how are you? How, how are the family? That's all encompassed into two words. Yo, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy, I told you once, there was a guy, I went to, uh, I was at, the, at, the, at, the, at the, co uh, the coffee machine here. So there's a guy in the yeshiva, and I asked him, I need a change. So I give him a 10 shekel coin. He gives me change. I said, thanks. He turns and goes, no problem, dog. <laughs> and he turns around, and he walks away. Now, I want to tell you something. I, wa I wasn't even the least bit insulted. I was flattered. I was flattered. I made it. I am a dog. He goes, yeah, no problem, dog. And, and now, if I, you know, as I, I'm standing there and I'm expecting, you know, the guy to turn around and like go like, oh, Rabbi, you know, I, I didn't mean it's just, a, it's just an expression. I expect him to break, you know, just, just, just walked right off into the sunset and left, and he, and he left me there to lap up my coffee. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I wasn't even the least bit. He, he was like, "Okay, dude, I'm a dog. I made it. <laughs> Here I am. I am a dog." <laughs> it's it's D A W D O W G. Well, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, what was the guy said something about a tie. Uh, what was he? he did not say no bad. He said the tie is. He wanted to say it's a nice tie. So he's not to me, of course, but he said it to somebody. I forgot what he said. He said not sick, not sick. I forgot what it was. He used. He used another one of these. Another one. He's huh? Like Ill. Yeah, something you know, something that normally we would avoid using. Yeah, but which has turned into a compliment. If you're yeah. really good at like a sport or a video game. You're called cracked. Nowadays. You're cracked. <laughs> you're cracked. Uh, okay. Oh no, you're now you're cracked. Okay. Okay. So Moshe Rabbeinu, as we were saying, <laughs> as we, before we got off the subject, <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu was the king of Kush, which was generally considered Ethiopia. There's a medrash that they fought. He was there. Remember, he ran away from if he ran from Egypt, he had to get to Midian, which is way far away. And so he runs to Midian, and he crosses somehow and gets in. A, he helped them fight a war, so they made him the king. And the queen wanted that the, the queen was still there, the widow of the previous king, and Moshe Rabbeinu wouldn't marry her. And, and then eventually he leaves there. But he was, what was Aaron doing through all those years? That was Moshe Rabbeinu. Where was Aaron? Three years older than Moshe Rabbeinu. Aaron was the leader of the Jewish people in Egypt. He was the leader of the people. So then our Kodesh Baruch comes to Aaron, comes to, comes to Moshe Rabbeinu, and he says to Moshe Rabbeinu, I want you to be the leader of the people. And Aaron says, and Moshe Rabbeinu says, nah, you know, Shlach no biyad tishlach, the Pesach in the Torah. Send the one that you've been sending up until now for the last 80 years. Who's been the leader? It's Aaron in Egypt. I don't want to take it. He, number one, he's my older brother. How's he going to feel? Aaron's the older brother, and I'm going to, be, I'm going to get the, 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 the primary role. And number two, not only am I getting the primary, I'm getting his role. I'm getting his role. It's, not, it's one thing to see your younger brother surpass you. It's another thing to see him surpass you by taking your position. How would you, have you ever been working in an office and somebody got a promotion that you wish you got, would have gotten? And it's one thing if you get it, okay, you know, that you'll have the stomach. But what if the, the boss calls you and says, by the way, I'm promoting Jonathan. I got good news and bad news. The good news is I'm promoting Jonathan. The bad news is it's your position, so we're demoting you. Wow. That's hard. Aaron was demoted. And then the Torah says about Aaron that he rejoiced for Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe says, no, he begs Hashem, no. And Hashem says, he's going to see you and he'll rejoice in his heart. He's not like you think. He's going to rejoice. That's why Aaron became the coin Godel, and he got the chest plate that rests on the heart. The chest plate, which is the most symbolic, uh, probably most outstanding symbol of the coin Godel, so Aaron gets it, rests, excuse me, rests on his heart. Why? Because Aaron was the one, Aaron was the one who rejoiced. So there I saw an apostle that says, I think it's later on in the Torah, but the, the, the commentaries say that it shows Moshe Rabbeinu rejoiced for Aaron. But over here, where you got this uh, shal shalas, so it could be that it's the same kind of context as, as what he called, as we saw by uh, by Yosef and by Lot. That there's a, there's a, it seems to be a lament of sorts, mm -hmm. like like you got to go do th do something which is really hard, not easy to do. Okay, all right. Any other questions before we go on? Yeah, is it possible if we could have two of your classes cool. during the day. Two of my classes. Just, just three of ours. <sighs> 
<laughs> I'll think about it. I'll let you know after Pesach. The, uh, <laughs> I'm flattered. I'm honored. And my wife would love that to happen, so I'd be out of the house. But um, just, just continuing this question quick, yeah. one more Shalashuda spot that we, that, we, that we know offhand, or just like one more example? Of what? A Shalshalis, not Shalshudas. Shalshudas is the third meal on Shabbos. This is a Shalshalis. Shalshalis. Yeah, this is a It's about as much as you're going to get to eat before Pesach, but it's a Shalshalis. Uh, I don't remember the others. I think there are six of them. There are six of them as far as I can serve, as far as I remember. Yeah. So what race was Moses? Do you know? What race was he? If he was king of Ethiopia. No, he, he's, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu is, is, is the same race as all, as all the descendants of Avram Avinu. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, it's an important question you're asking. Let's get something clear over here. Avram Avinu is married to two women, right? Noah has three sons, Shem, Ham, and Yephes. Shem, what we call Semites. That's why, we're called, that's why people are called anti-Semites, because we come from Shem. I never knew that. I didn't know that till, till much later in life. That's why we're called. I never know that. My, you know, I grew up, and my parents say, oh, that guy's such an anti-Semite. And I, I didn't know what, I only knew means that he hates us. I didn't know what a Semite is. I never stopped to ask because I was too busy doing other things. But he's an anti-Semite. And I know that I never any heard anybody refer to as just a plain, oh, him, he's not, an, he's a Semite. So Semite comes from the word Shem. Shem is a Shem. He's an anti, anti-Shem, anti-Shem, anti, anti-Semite. And he's, in Hebrew, they even say anti-Shemi. Anti-Shemi. Shemi is Shem, Shem. So, so. Noah has three sons, Shem, Ham, and Yephes. Ham is generally the African con- continent. Yephes is Europe, Greece. That, 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 that. Shem is us, and to a certain extent it's the Yishmaelim. Because when Avram Avinu marries two women, one of them is Sarah, who comes from the same line as Avram Avinu. So we're pure Shemites, we're pure Semites. So Moshe Rabbeinu is coming from the same line. He's coming from the exact same line as Avram, Avina, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. So Moshe Rabbeinu is one of us. He happened to live in Kush, but, he, but he's one of us, 100%. Avram has a second son who's a crossbreed because it's Avram Avinu who married Hagar, who comes from Egypt. Mitzrayim is one of the sons. Is, it comes from Ham. Ham has four sons. So Mitzrayim is from... So Yishmael comes from the two lines. He comes from the line of Shem and from the line of Ham, whereas we come from only the line of Shem. That's the, that's, so Moshe Rabbeinu is simply a descendant. Moshe Rabbeinu is simply, he's a, let's make the calculation. Uh, Levi, Amram, Moshe. Um, Mo, Avram, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu is a great, great, great grandson of Avram Avinu, if I got that right. Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Levi, Amram, Gershonkos, uh, oh no, 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 one more generation. Levi, Kehos, Amram. So Moshe Rabbeinu is, Moshe Rabbeinu is the seventh generation from Avram Avinu. Mm. Yeah, I, got, I think I got that right. That's about 15 years. About what? 50 years, 50 years. 50 years? Yeah. Kind of 50 years. Yeah, right, they were getting married like 12, no? Wow. Yeah, but Avram Avinu didn't have children until he was 100. Right, and, uh, and and Amram was Amram's mother, Moshe Rabbeinu's mother was was 130 when he when she conceived. So, so to clarify, us uh, as you're like that's us. So we're Semites. We are Semites, pure Semites. Geographically, that's geographically we're all over the place. So it's, not, just, so it's not based on geography. No, it's it's, no, no, no. It's just, yeah, because Jews are all over the place. The Jews in the Jews in Yemen and the Jews in Australia and the Jews in Canada. They're also Semites. they're all Shemites, pure Shemites. Yeah, there might have been some intermarriages along the way, but as as a nation, we as a the Jewish nation comes from Shem. There are twelve tribes, and the tribes separated. The ten tribes were sent into exile. Two tribes stayed in Israel, but they're all from the seed of Shem. They're all from the seed of Shem. It's all genetically we are all from Shem. Then you have Ham, and then you have Yefes. Okay, there was in, there was intermarriage and there was that sort of thing, but that's the that's the basic breakdown. Jews are everywhere, which is one of the brachas that we have, because the the the, the, the anti semites are never able to. Gemara says it, that if we're all massed together, then it's easier to knock us off. So one of the blessings is that we that, that we've always been spread apart, and you find Jews everywhere. 
Everywhere you go, you find Jews. So the, the ham and the Epis? Ham is, Ham is basically Ham. Africa. But is that still Jewish? No, 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 no. The Jews are only from Ham. No, let's, let's back up again. Noah has three sons. Shem, Ham, and Yefes. We come from only the one son, Shem. We come from Shem. Uh, Yishmael comes from a combination of Shem and Ham. So the other two are not Jewish? And Yefes is, is the European continent. Yeah, but they're not Jewish. It's... No, we come from Shem. The Jews Shem come from Shem. If somebody converts, then that's something else. But the Jews as a, as a nation come from Shem. Okay, that's where the name Semites come from. That's where Shem and Sem- anti-Semites come from. Uh, I was told something that, um, like, all the Jews in the world, it's like only 600,000 souls. It's split apart. There are all sorts of Kabbalistic, uh, all sorts of Kabbalistic ideas, none of which I know anything about. And I've heard the concepts. I don't know anything about in... My approach to all these things is, and anything that doesn't allow me to sleep late, in other words, the concept exists, but I still got to get up tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock to put on tefillin. So just that, you know, I like practical. There's a kind, it's a nice, nice concept. Oh, wow, there's 600,000 souls. That's great. I get to, I get to, what do you call it? I get to uh, 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 skip davening to, no, 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 yeah, still got to do it. It's like people ask the question, like, do I have free choice or predetermined? How could God know what we're going to choose? Whatever the answer to that is, I still have to be nice to my mother-in-law, right? So if I could do, somehow I get a dispensation, I mean, she was nifter, she was a wonderful woman, I'm just using that as an example. But if, if somebody get this and say, okay, free choice, predetermination, you get to eat, you get to go to any tray for restaurants of your choice. Oh, all right, now let's talk, you know, if that's what it, but I can't. I'm not going to still can't go into any, any sort of Kentucky Fried Chicken or, or any sort of Arby's or any whatever it is. It's not going to help me. See, you know what, I still got to do what I got to do. You are allowed if you have a, I'm being a little bit facetious, not much, but just a little bit. You are allowed if you do have a bent in that direction, if you have the philosophical bent or even the Kabbalistic bent, you're allowed to investigate. You should. I'm being a little bit too facetious probably. You should. If that's your area of interest, you should. But don't let that interfere with the most important things, which are hardcore halacha, Gemara, Mishnah. After that, person wants some entertainment. You want to look at some Kabbalah. You want to go into the philosophy. Don't make that the main pursuit. That's, that's, the, that's the why I get facetious about it. Some people get so caught up in that, they, they throw out, I never liked that expression, throwing out, they throw out the baby with the bathwater. I mean, I don't know anybody who's ever done that. But, uh, but, but the, 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 you never heard that expression? No. You throw out the baby with the bathwater. That means you, 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 you the, what we call in Hebrew, Iker and Tafel. You take wow. that which is <coughs> secondary and you make it primary. Oh, okay. That's where we part company. You want, to, you want to pursue it as a hobby of the area of interest, that's fine. But not that it should be the main pursuit. The main pursuit has to be the hardcore. Okay, any other questions on there since we got uh, any other questions? Okay, so let's take a look at a couple more. Then tomorrow, I was wondering what to do tomorrow because this week we're not learning learning Parsha Shemini anyway because it's Shabbos. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's what do you call it? It's... Uh, it's Yantif. Shabbos is Yantif this week. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Pesach, so we have special laning. We don't lane the regular Parsha. What, what Parsha are we reading? <coughs> we learned to pay the special Pesach laning. Uh, the various, the, the, what do you call it? What do we do? I call it Pesach. Uh, I forgot. Huh? Is it Exodus chapter 12? What's that? Exodus chapter 12. Oh, is that what we're doing? Oh, 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 oh. So we could, so maybe we'll do that tomorrow, the Korban Pesach, the Korban Pesach, the, the Paschal Lamb. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, we'll talk about that on, talk about that tomorrow. Yeah, okay, not a bad idea. Let's just finish up Tzav today. So if you take a look, take a look at Perg Vov Pasuk Yud Ches. <coughs> oh, strong Coke. Perg Vov Pasuk Yud Ches, and I learned all about Kush today. Um... Let me just use the, uh, you know. Uh, Shabbos Hohomot is Exodus 33, 12, 
dash thirty four twenty six. He was related to the mafia. Oh, oh, mafia. Yeah. Oh yeah. What's what's the name of the parsha? Sorry about the. I did a lecture so where a guy you know, some pulls out a handkerchief and he just like you know it's a couple hundred people there and a guy's standing there. <laughs> and I, I, I couldn't I, that I can't. Uh, yeah, that's you know a little you know hey buddy you know we're eating it's not like we're now we're, we're not watching a football game now you know watching a football, you know I, I I know exactly what you mean. You know yeah you know, you know, like you know a little bit uh, just a little think man <laughs> just a little. Like a little <laughs> yes. Maybe they're on a higher level where it's like, you know, oh. I'd be wasting time. <laughs> no, that, no, that, no, no, bro. Yeah, it's very admirable that you're judging them favorably, but no. <laughs> very admirable, but no. <laughs> okay, take a look at Pergvav Pasuk Yud Ches. And this is on page 572. Three lines to the bottom. Uh, through it from the top. This is the law of the sin offering. In the same location in the in the in the uh, sanctuary where you shech the korban ola, you shech the korban chatos. If they Hashem kodesh kodeshim he. Okay. Now Rashi says bimkom. Uh, where is it? Um, where's Rashi here? Mm, where, what, what's happening here? Yudches. Okay, he doesn't say. I thought Rashi says over here, but I said earlier. The the it's in the north of the in the in the by the Korbanola. It says Yishecht it on the north side, right? And and where where we learned earlier that uh, Yishecht the the Ola. Where is it? Let's try something. Where, I, I, I'm, I'm losing my mind. Okay, the Torah said earlier, I forgot where it was it, you shechted on the north side of the of the of the Azara, of the of the sanctuary. Here it says you shech the chatas, the sin offering, same place where you you you, you shech the donated ola. Now, that's a strange way to tell you a location. Why didn't the Torah just say shech the chatas on the north side? Why does it say shecht it where you shech the ola? You heard a question. Or just tell me where it is on the north side. Why are you telling me why you shecht at the same place you shech the ola? So you see over here that the Torah is concerned for a person's dignity. That means that a person who brings a chatas means you messed up. A person who brings a korban ola, you can bring a korban ola for several purposes. You can bring a korban ola. Because you, you donated an ola, you felt you want to give a donation, you were inspired. A achatas is a mandatory offering when a person transgresses a sin. So a guy comes marching up, and now if you see him go into the area of the, of the Azara with his korban, and everybody's looking like, so what was it today, Jonathan, huh? I <laughs> messed up, what was it, with the old, that old Shabbos light switch again, John? I told you, you got to work on that. And everybody sees you, you know, you got... And, and so, so it can be very embarrassing. And therefore, the Torah says, emphasizes, you shecht it where you shecht the Ola, so that nobody should recognize that why it is you're there. I, there's a big question on that. The chatos is female, and the Ola is male. Hmm. The chatos is a female sheep, the Ola is a male sheep, or whatever the animal is. The answer is, okay, but nobody's examining it that closely. Yeah. Right? And yeah. number one. Number two, to the degree that you can you try to be as discreet as you can. You try to do as much as you can to try to help avoid people, to, uh, avoid people being embarrassed to the degree that you're able to. The, uh, uh, the, the, um, one of the reasons that we daven Shmon Esrei silently is to not embarrass sinners. That a person daven silently, and also the vidui that was saying Yom Kippur, you say it silently. Right? We, don't, we, don't, we don't confess in front of each other. We don't, the only time you talk about sins is if you need to go to a authority figure in order to be advised how to, get a, how to, how to atone for sins. That you do. You go to authority figure, you tell them, this is what I did, I need, I need a cup or I need an atonement for that. But otherwise, otherwise you don't do that. Otherwise you don't go and, uh, uh, what do you call it? Chasing you don't talk. You don't talk. If you, because if you talk about it, that means you're not really embarrassed about it. You know, let's say if, if a guy's father was in jail, if a guy's father was in jail, he wouldn't go to people and say, you know, by the way, my father was in, my father's in jail. 
Okay. If a guy's mother is a drag, drug addict, he wouldn't go around talking about it to people, oh, yeah, by the way, my mom, yeah, she's a drug addict. You know, most people would try to keep it quiet. You keep your, your dirty laundry, you generally, if you, you've done something, you really messed up bad in life, you've really, you generally don't talk about it. They don't talk about it. If you're talking about it, that means you're not really embarrassed about it. You're not really regretful of it. So we don't talk about it. It's, 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 a, it's disrespectful to, to, to the king that we should talk about our misdeeds. If a person would like to get do tshuva, so then a person goes and asks a, a rabbinic authority. There are several uh, uh, letters printed by Ramosha Feinstein where people have asked Ramosha Feinstein how to do tshuva for, for the worst immoral forms of immorality. Anything you could think of, he's got in there. And how does one do tshuva for these, these various misdeeds having to do with immorality? And by all of them, the answer is the same. Ramosha gives the same answer. Don't fast. Don't do any sort of uh, 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 self-flagellation of any sort because we're not strong. In the old days, people used to fast twice a week sometimes. People would fast. And they could, we, if we fast, we can't concentrate on our dab, we can't concentrate on Torah, we're in a cra- cranky mood, so we're not nice to people. Ramosha finds he says, study Torah. Torah is the ultimate you know, Pesach says, well, you have to go to the mikveh. Torah is a mikveh, because Torah is water. Torah is the ultimate purification. It's both water and it's fire. So it purifies us. The same way that you take your utensils there of Pesach and you, bo- you put them in boiling water to boil them out, to boil out the kasher, the kalim, right? When you have to kasher, okay, you put it in boiling water. Torah is boiling water. Torah is boiling water. That's the way we boil out the Sahara. And, and Rav Moshe finds it, and the people asked him, they said, okay, I want to do tshuva. What should I do? And Ramosha finds To the men, that's what he says. To the ladies, he says, number one, don't be upset. Number two, be happy that you're doing tshuva. Say some extra to heal him. Do this, that, whatever, whatever he tells them. But upbeat, upbeat, upbeat. Got to be upbeat. There's, no, there's no, nobody who can't, who can't fix himself up. Got to be upbeat about it, but we have to do it. That's why we have our authorities. 200 years ago, people fasted. And they fasted a lot. For me, fasting a lot is, is between the time between davening shachris and getting to breakfast. That's what I call fasting. Yeah, uh, for, me, for, me, for me, that's fasting. In the old days, people were people that were a stronger generation. They were the people you were to be stronger. They could go without food. It wasn't a big, wasn't a big issue. In Europe, people barely had food. They, you know, they, they, it was a different, different generation. Our parents were stronger than us. My grandparents, completely different people, completely different generation. Okay, that's the idea. One more point. Um, Take a look at Perik Zion Pasuk Yud Beis. Fascinating idea. Perik Zion Pasuk Yud Beis. Uh, it's on page 574. Zos Torah Zevach HaShlomim. Right in the middle of the page. Asher Yakriv Lashem. So we're talking about now the what's called the peace offering. Im al Toda Yakriv Let's say a person wants to give thanks. Now, the Tod Korban Toda is brought for Four specific things. The Rosh Tevis is Chayim. A person who has recovered from an illness, a person who's gotten out of the desert, a person who's traveled overseas, and a person who has come out of prison. Those are the four that a person has, has uh, brings a korban toda. Right? Look at the Rashi. It's the right column. Look at the Rashi, the right column. Right, the three lines on the right. Im al toda yakrivenu. Says Rashi, Im al dvar hoda al nes shenasal. If a person wants to give thanks for a miracle that happened, kigon yorde hayam. People have gone off to see. The holchei midboros. People made out of a desert. The chavushe beisasur. And people who were in prison, they were captured. The cholish and isrape. And a sick person who was cured. We're not talking about a common cold over here. We're talking about somebody who was seriously ill. And a person has experienced, and he could he commits himself to a type of shlamim. Now, if a person just says, I'm bringing a korban shlamim, so then he brings the animal. If a person says, I'm bringing a korban toda, he brings the shlamim and 40 loaves of bread. That's a lot of bread, right? And the reason he does that is because when you celebrate a miracle, you invite other people to participate. The bread forces you to bring other people so everybody can participate because we want to publicize the miracle. When a person goes through a miracle, it's something we nowadays call the sudas hoda, a, 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 a thanksgiving meal. Yeah, people give gratitude to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So you bring 40 loaves of bread along with the meat. 
and then you have people who are going to participate with you in eating it. Now, why do you bring 40? Why is the number 40? Remember we spoke about this once? What is the significance in Judaism in the number 40? Good. That's one example. What does it symbolize? 40 always represents renewal. Oh, wow. It represents renewal. Now, for example, the world has to be destroyed. Hashem makes it rain 40 days and 40 nights. A child is considered a viable human being, according to halacha, after 40 days of conception. Moshe Rabbeinu went up to the mountain for 40 days. Right? That's a renewed state of the Jewish people. They're going, if they would have messed up, they're stepping into 40 years in the desert to renew their entire attitude. 400 years in Egypt, which is just a multiple of 40. A mikveh is 40 se'ah. 40 measures of water is the minimum size of a mikveh. Because when a person immerses in the mikveh, it's a renewal. It's a renewed state. Um, um, what do you call it? You have these 40 breads. It's the same idea. A person who has experienced these miracles has renewed himself. He's been renewed or been given granted a new lease on life by a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Since he's been granted a new lease on life, so he celebrates it with 40, with 40 loaves of bread. There are two other places which are very fascinating. Um, there are, how many lashes does a person get normally? How, many, what is the, how does the Torah describe it? What's that? What's that? The highest is 40, and actually the Gemara says, how many does he really get? 39. 39. Yet the Torah says, our boy Yakenu, and the Gemara determines from the way the, the structure of the Pasuk, that even though the Torah says 40 lashes, he gets 39. It's got to be a number, number divisible by 3. Which is very strange that the Torah called it 40, yet we get 39, and that's what the Gemara, it's like an eye for an eye. Where it doesn't, where whatever the, the Pasuk doesn't mean what, exa- what it sounds like to us. The meaning of the Pasuk is 39. That's what 40, my, that's what our boy Miyakeno means, 39. Strange, right? Just like an eye for an eye does not mean an eye. There's another place we find it in the Gomorrah when it talks about the 40, the, 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 the forbidden categories of creative activity on Shabbos. What does the Gomorrah refer to it as? 39. The Gomorrah calls it our boy Chaser Achas, 40 minus 1. That's the Gomorrah and Shabbos called it. There are 40 minus 1. That's a strange way to, to, to refer to this called 39. What do you got to do that for? And by the lashes also. Just tell me 39 lashes. Why, why is that? If we, we understand, for example, an eye for an eye, we understand. Why, why is an eye for an eye? Just tell me, if I, am I financial? You knock out somebody's eye, you got to pay him. So why is the Torah saying eye for an eye? The Torah wants us to understand that they're really what a person deserves. Don't think that you've compensated him by paying him money. You can't compensate a person for his eye. And, and the only way you could really relate to what would happen is if this person would have his own eye put out. Then he'd be able to relate to it because you, you haven't compensated him. But we don't do that. You pay money. Why over here? By, by la- so just tell me about the lashes. You hit him 39. What's the 40? The answer is it's all the same theme over here. What's the point of giving stuff of, of lashes? Not to give a guy, not some sadist so we can give him some job satisfaction he gets to whip people. What's the point of, of lashes? The point of lashes, somebody obviously messed up. And this guy who messed up needs a new attitude. So the theme is 40. We give him 39 because that's the halacha. But the whole point of it is the 40. What it really means is, what it really means is, I could do so much for you. I could hit you 39 times. I could do that. I can't change you unless you do something on your own. The 40th step you have to take on your own. We have to take on our own. So the whole theme, and the same thing with Shabbos. The whole theme, same thing with Shabbos. There are 39 forbidden. Why? What's the whole goal of Shabbos? The whole goal is after the week to recharge ourselves, to renew ourselves. I could create the playing field for you. I'll stop you from being distracted 39 ways. I can't do it all for you. You're going to have to take the step, the 40th step you have to take. If, if, if you stay in bed all day Shabbos, you stay in bed all day Shabbos, so you can do that. But then you missed the point. Good, you didn't do the 39 malachas, you didn't do the 39, you didn't take the, do the 39, what do you call it? But you missed the whole point of Shabbos, which is to be proactive, to renew ourselves. That's the idea. Okay.